Hello everyone, today I thought we'd try to do a little bit of creative coding. We have this concept of a vector field. This is a, uh, a field where there's a set number of vectors in a defined space, and each of those vectors uh, points to a specific direction, if you want to think of it like that. Now, in the case of the example we have here, it is uh, you can see that they are pointing off to the sides, and they're sort of avoiding the center. This has been used in a couple different simulations you might have seen. I think Sebastian Log did a video on the uh, Boyd algorithm where the uh, Boyd simulations were used and it, it pretty much mimics that. But I thought it might be fun instead of making all of these uh, vectors point away from the center, we just make them follow the mouse. So let's go ahead and let's see what we can do here uh, from scratch. We're gonna start off by creating a uh, new Rails project. I already have mine done, and we're just going to CD into it. So we have a project to run. We really just need a web server and then the ability to create some JavaScript. Uh, the rest of it will pretty much be handled uh, by the JavaScript itself. So there's nothing fancy needed. We're just using Rails because that's what we're comfortable with. Now to actually see the page, we're gonna do a Rails G, and then we'll say controller pages home to give ourselves a home page. And then to do the JavaScript, we'll just do a Rails G stimulus. And we'll call this, uh, let's say vector field, just one word. After that, we can go ahead and run a Rails S because our setup is done and that'll start our server. We can now come over to our config and our routes.rb. And here we'll just quickly do a root to the pages controller and the home action. So here we have the get pages slash home. We're just setting the root to be the home page. So now if we come over to, let's say, localhost port 3000, you'll see we are on our home page, just like that easy. We can come over to our views, our pages, and our home page. And here we can just quickly get rid of everything and replace it with a content tag. And I'll hit F11. And then for this content tag, we want to create a uh, canvas. This canvas isn't going to have anything inside of it. We are going to give it some data. This data needs to match up what our uh, controller is that we created earlier. And as we already know, the controller was called vector field. So we just make sure that matches. After that's done, we can pretty much leave the home page, And instead we can spend our time inside of our JavaScript controllers and our vector field controller. This is where we're going to be doing the bulk of our work, and it's actually not a terrible amount of work. Most of your time is just going to be spent customizing the thing. So to actually do this, we are going to need a single library. This is going to be coming from a uh, simplex noise library. So this is going to be make noise 2D. And to install this, we're going to stop our server. In my case, I'm going to run a bin slash import map pin and we want to pin open-simplex-noise. If you're using yarn or npm, just replace the bin slash import map uh, pin with a npmi or a yarn add, both of those will work. And then just uh, the open simplex noise. After that's done, you can go ahead and run a Rails S. There's also a CDN if you're just using vanilla JavaScript. Uh, you can go ahead and find that one online. So after we're done with that, we can now come into our connect method and we can get started. So as GitHub Copilot is suggesting here, we want to create a, uh, a noise object from our make noise 2D that we imported. And we're gonna change the seed from the date now just to be a hard coded value. So we always get the same result. For our canvas, you can actually just access this dot element because this controller is attached to our canvas. So that allows us to grab it a little bit more easily. After that, we can call this dot canvas dot get context and then we can do our draw loop. Now, in between these, GitHub Copilot was helpful, but I think we can do a little bit better. Let's go ahead and let's set the width to be the window inner width and the window inner height. That takes care of those two. Next thing we wanna do is come down below the context and we want to set this dot mouse y is equal to zero. And at this point we can include this dot mouse x. Uh, it, really depends on how you want to do this. There's a couple different effects you get depending on what you decide to include or omit. So just uh, do whatever you feel is the most creative. We're now going to pass in the event and we'll open this up. 
And for each of these, we just want to set this.mouseX and this.mouseY to be equal to event.clientX and uh, clientY. These will give you a slight offset. If you'd like the vector field to perfectly point towards your mouse, then you're gonna to wanna to change this to offset X. After that, we have our draw loop. So let's come into our draw loop and finish this up. In our draw loop, we just create a draw method. And in here, our first check is going to be a way to limit the number of frames we're drawing, just so that we don't uh, you know, destroy the performance of our browser. To do that, we can do a quick little if check at the beginning. We say let now equal date that now. And if now dot the last timestamp that we haven't defined yet is less than 1000 divided by 60, then we can request an animation frame and return. This is basically just saying if you set this to 15, you'll have like a uh, 15 frame per second window. Here we're setting it to 60. Next, we can come down here and we can set this dot last timestamp equal to now, and that takes care of our initial loop. The next thing we wanna do is clear our canvas. So if we get in here, we want to clear the rect so that we can draw something new. In here, we now want to create two for loops and the values for these are ultimately going to be whatever you'd like them to be. We can start by just doing a plus plus for each of these, and then we can change this later. The reason why we change it is because maybe you want to get a different effect for what your vector flow field looks like. In here, we can now create some noise, and if you've done any of the noise tutorials before, this should look familiar to you, but effectively what you do is you create your noise, you pass in your X and your Y. This is going to give you a pretty repetitive, or a uh, procedural pattern, sorry, not repetitive. It's going to give you a procedural pattern. This noise is the same type of thing that's used in games like Minecraft. Uh, and then we pass in the X and the Y so that we have like different numbers going in here. By dividing it by 100, it just changes the frequency of the noise. You don't really have to worry about what that means. You'll see what it does in a little bit here. Now we do want to say, uh, or to give ourselves a color and let's pick a color. So it's going to try and give us a random color here. I'm going to say uh, green uh, HSL and then hopefully GitHub Copilot will give me what I want. Looks like it gave me something uh, close to what I wanted. So that gives us a color. Feel free to copy this if you'd like. And then we can come down here. We can set the fill style equal to the color. You can create a fill rect at x, y, one, and one. It's just going to create a one wide uh, fill rect. And then finally, we can draw lines from the current uh, mouse position to the current pixel. So we start by beginning a path. We then move to this dot x, actually is what this should be. We can move to this x and y, oops, y. And then after that, we can come down here and we can create a line to this dot mouse x and this dot mouse y. We then set the stroke color to be equal to the color we created up here. And then we can say stroke. At the end here, we're gonna come down two braces and we're just gonna say request animation frame. This is what's going to allow us to loop back and continue to call this draw function. We then pass in this dot draw dot bind this. And at this point, we can go ahead and exit out of here and refresh the page and see what we've created. If we hit control shift I, we can see that we are currently loading, but it is uh, pretty slow. So I'd like to create something a little bit uh, faster and a bit more responsive. And the way we can do that, we can actually come up here and where we have our uh, draw loop, we have our two for loops. You can change these to a plus equals and let's say 15 for now. Right now it's creating a, uh, it's going through the loop for each pixel in the canvas. And by doing this, we change it to spread it out a bit more. So it's only going through the loop for every 15th pixel in the canvas. If we come over here and we refresh now and we give it a minute, it should hopefully be a little bit faster. And you can see here, we get a pretty neat effect where it's not quite following our mouse position, but it is uh, pretty cool. What we can do is we can come in here and we can change the uh, offset X to be an offset Y in the mouse Y. Now, if we refresh, you'll see it attaches to our mouse. Now, of course, this should hopefully give you some ideas of what you can do here just by changing some of these variables. Sometimes the weird behavior is sort of the desirable one. Let's try the client X that we saw GitHub Copilot suggest earlier and the client Y. Let's go ahead and refresh that. You'll see it is slightly off center. 
see not much has changed here what we can do though is if we come down here we can take a look at our uh, options so the first one we can take a look at is our x and y here we can take the number and just divide it by 10 to see what happens if we change what the frequency is if we now refresh we get uh, sort of a more uniform color scheme and if we change this all the way down to one we can then refresh again and you can see well i mean it's kind of hard to see here maybe what we want to do is change this down to a five and a five this will of course lag us a little bit more you'll hopefully get a better idea of what you're looking at you do start to see this cool little clover pattern on the sides that's pretty neat but let's take a look at something a bit more interesting so if we take this and we change this to let's say 50 and 50 and come over here and refresh now we get a couple little splotches they're sort of following us around like a spider web but instead of using this green color what we can do is we can ask github copilot for a gray hsl this will give us a grayish color and for this grayish color what i'd actually like to do is to change this to something like uh, well let's leave it at 120 120 and refresh you can see we get this gray color let's now change this to something similar to i don't know five and five and for our percentages we can actually just drag this over and we can just change this to a percent and then at the start here we can say zero comma zero percent comma and these are just values i found while playing around with it so this gives us a bit of a darker value and you can see here we do have that slight off center if we come up to the top we can change this to a offset x and a offset y just like that and you'll see the off center bit sort of fix itself and now it's pointing at the actual mouse co cursor's location again so let's come down here where we're doing the uh the gray we can also set it so that we change the background so up here in the clear rect what we can instead do is we can set a fill style we set the fill style uh, after the clear rect to be hsl of zero zero percent and zero percent we can then uh, add the fill style as a fill rect instead of a clear rect we can fill the whole thing with that color now what you'll see is you get this ever so faint tracking of the mouse where it looks like there's a uh, a slight shadow following the cursor and this is sort of the effect that i really like when you work on a website if you're looking for a subtle background effect to sort of get it so it's almost not visible and you don't quite even notice it's there but it adds that slight bit of polish now of course i'm not suggesting to use a, a vector flow field for your professional your professional website uh, but it is uh, a fun little effect to do on certain pages in a portfolio application, for example. You might want to take this and uh, you can even tweak this a bit more. You can say maybe do a one and a one for the background. And uh, it might be a bit too uh, dark. Let's go with two. Let's try five plus two. And then we can even change this to five plus 15. You get that grid effect again, maybe a bit too much. Let's go with plus two and plus or and times 25. Now you can see you get fewer of the splotches following you. And if we go to, let's say 50, we get those uh, sort of sticky little uh, web looking of effects. But yeah, that's all I have for you today. I just thought it was an interesting exercise where you can stretch your uh, creative brain a little bit more than your analytical problem solving brain. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was uh, helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.